Cool. So welcome, everyone. Uh, for today's community call, we have one, I think, like pretty monumental topic. Um, and I'll give a little bit of background here and sort of like what we should discuss during the call. Um, if everyone here had heard of Constitution DAO, I think this happened maybe like 10 days ago, but essentially it was like um, a group of random people. Well, even before that, there are, I think, like 11 copies of the Constitution, like original copies that the founders like wrote out and like actually like put together with their own hands. And all of those copies, except for one, are in the government's hands, like government property. There was one privately held copy of the Constitution, and it just recently um, went up for auction at a Sotheby's auction. Shout out, Kobe. But um, essentially what happened over the course of like just like a day or two is someone was like, oh, hey, you know, a private copy of the Constitution is up for sale. Like we should get a bunch of people together and buy it. And so almost out of nowhere, it's just like a Discord channel. Um, a bunch of people got together. I think they had like almost 50,000 people join over the course of like a couple of days. And they raised $47 million in order to try and buy this constitution at auction. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, they weren't successful. Um, there was some hedge fund like CEO who like outbid them by a little bit because uh, it was clear how much money they had. But um, yeah, I think the the really inspiring thing here is that like unbelievably quickly, you can raise a ton of money from a ton of different people in order to acquire uh, assets and make them publicly available to anyone. I think another really important part of the Constitution DAO is like the average contribution. And this, I don't know this 100% accurately, but it was like around $300. So they raised $47 million without any like, gigantic individual contributors, which is like kind of amazing in my perspective. And so this proof of concept got a lot of people thinking about ways that like you can potentially like crowdsource capital in order to like make other private assets, public goods. And one of the ideas just came from a guy named David McDougall, who just sent out a tweet, like he'd given a little bit of money to Constitution Dow, And he was like, oh man, like this is a great concept that should be applied to like scientific research. Like we should just all get together, pool capital, buy paywall journals, and then open source all of the intellectual property. So that way, you know, anyone can read all of the content that has ever been published through these journals. And so um, this idea got a lot of traction and a lot of interest from a bunch of different people. And over the course of the last two days, almost 2,000 people have joined the Discord uh, with the mission of raising funds in order to acquire uh, scientific journals. Um, where this applies to us, this was uh, uh, maybe like six months ago, but Brian had mentioned to me that one of the ways that we could potentially kick off like fresh content on Research Hub is for Research Hub as an organization to acquire journals and just incorporate their editorial staff into research hubs. So people could submit manuscripts, we could do peer review and have like a journal that's actually operating on research hub. So um, I saw this tweet and joined the community of the, uh, they were initially called Swartz DAO, but there was some controversy about using Aaron Swartz's name. So they just renamed to open access DAO. And uh, the idea is to get a bunch of people together, similar to Constitution DAO, pool capital, and then uh, start buying journals and open sourcing like the information. Um, so far, this community has kind of had like two separate goals. One is like the pretty tangible thing of like buying journals and like open sourcing them. And then the second thing is that they want to address like the incentive structure issues that exist in science. So like, you know, lack, lack of replication, um, uh, basically like build incentives for people to share uh, research in the open. And so the nice thing is that Research Hub already does a grand majority of that. Like we have a web app where people can author content. We're pretty close to building peer review features. We plan to have the ability to fund research and we have the infrastructure to essentially play with incentives um, in order to encourage like healthy behavior within the scientific community. And so one of the things that could happen is we could merge the Research Hub DAO with 
the open access DAO in order to kind of like join forces and have like all of these communities work together in order to make science better. The reason why this fits really well is they have what we don't have and we have what they don't have. They have a really passionate community of a lot of people who are invested in the space and who know how to like organize DAOs in a way that are like kind of marketing machines. Um, a lot of the people from Constitution DAO have kind of like essentially filtered in to the open access DAO. And then we have the product, the technical expertise and a token um, through which we can potentially align incentives and organize behavior. So I spoke with their core team and they're really excited about the idea of potentially uh, joining forces with us. And what I wanted to do with this call is basically just have a sounding board of like all of the potentially good parts, all the potentially bad parts and see if we can get a consensus from the community of like, do we want to do this? Um, so yeah, does anybody have any thoughts kind of on the idea of merging with open access now? Um, Joyce, can I ask a quick question? Like, uh, how did they raise the money? Did they sell an NFT or something like that? Like, uh, I imagine, and I could be wrong, I don't know. Did they raise money under the expectation that there'll be like um, each person contributing would get a fraction of the um, Constitution and that they'll be stored, the Constitution will be stored somewhere safe? How how did that work? They did it through a governance token where one ETH yeah. equaled a million of their governance token and they would just mint tokens as funds right. came in. And the idea is they would do DAO votes for like where the constitution would be stored and like mm -hmm. basically the management of like actually housing the constitution. So, so not actual ownership. Um, I'm not 100% sure of like who would actually own it because I don't think they had like a legal entity like we have for our DAO. But the it, the idea is you buy a governance token and then have a say in like what will happen to the constitution. So open access DAO has similar thoughts where it would be like the DAO would buy a journal and um, a governance token would be used to vote on like what journals people want to buy, like. Uh, what they should do with the content afterwards, basically the management of these acquisitions. Got it. So they'll basically be like, a, yeah, it seems like a great idea. In your mind, do you, are you thinking of having like one governance token per journal or just like one governance token for like all the journals or TBD kind of thing? Yeah, so I think the really cool part about this is in their community, there are people who have thought more about community governance than we have. So I think it's sort of a TBD kind of thing. In my mind, the most applicable uh, thing is using research coin as the governance token for this DAO when it comes to making acquiring decisions. For instance, like I could go out and do some work to figure out what journals are we able to acquire. And I could bring a list back to the community with like potential prices and then have the community vote on which journals we wanted to acquire. Um, there's like a bunch of different ways that this could end up going in the future. And I sort of see this as like the first step of something larger where DAO governance decisions can be used to acquire journals, but over time it can be a lot more than that. It's just like the, the kind of V1 simplest case in order to like get into a pattern of like productive decision making. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it. Yeah. Just to just to quickly chime in, I mean, I I generally think, you know, combining forces sounds really interesting. I I would say, um, maybe taking some time or or having this community join the you know the Discord for um, Schwartz or whatever it's called now, like just explore different ways of combining forces before just sort of all out saying let's merge um, would be useful, I think. Um, my, I guess, slight hesitation is that, you know, Constitution DAO was set up effectively to buy a single asset, a physical document. Um, and, you know, it, what it did was pretty amazing, bringing all these people, people and capital together to attempt to do that didn't work out. There was a whole lot of challenges around, you know, who's governance and lots of complicated things happening. And that was just to buy a single asset. Now, 
buying a company, I mean, I just looked up Elsevier, for example, and they have yearly revenues of about $3 billion and 8,000 plus employees. So we're talking about an, a company that's probably valued at 20 to $30 billion. So like the idea now, maybe there's smaller things that could be done, like buying smaller journals or, or even maybe buying the rights to a historic library of publications from a journal that might be interesting to explore. But like, this is a big task. So um, I think it's worth exploring, especially maybe since that community has a lot of energy and maybe some investors and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I would just want to kind of parse out, well, where, where can a DAO realistically provide value in this space in like the, in the next year or two or something, you know? Um, and maybe it is buying historic journals and then releasing those and making those open access. That would be maybe possible. Also, you know, these are companies and they can say, tell you to fuck off if you, if they don't want to sell to you, you know what I mean? Like, so, so it's a little right. bit complicated, I would say. Um, but I'm excited to see like how, how research hub and this new DAO could collaborate or maybe do a joint venture or something that'd be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a great point, Ari. Um, I just posted their invite link in the chat here. So yeah, definitely encourage everyone uh, to go and check out the conversations that are happening there. And anybody who watches this later, I'll add it in the uh, um, notes under the YouTube video. But um, you make a great point. I don't think that Elsevier is going to sell to a DAO, no matter what the price is. Mm -hmm. um, one case study that I think is exciting is a company called Hindawi which was basically like a platform for open access journals. The way they started was their founder just acquired small journals for like 50 to 100,000 a pop. And they ended up putting together 200 different journals under this one platform. And I think in January of 2020, they sold to Wiley for 300 million. So I don't think it makes sense to even spend 300 million on a platform like Hindawi, but I do think it makes a lot of sense to spend 50 to 100K on some of these smaller journals, slowly incorporate them into Research Hub's product and like kind of work out the kinks of how that could operate while we continue to build community and build like value behind the token and kind of build up over time to the point where we might have the capital to do something bigger, like buy a Hindawi or like, you know, maybe more. I think it's a, it's a process that will take a decade, but I think it's a very exciting first step. And then uh, another thing too, is there's a lot of discussion right now about like what a merger would actually mean. So uh, some of like the issues when it comes to like, how that could work out are actively being discussed right now in their discord. So uh, there, there will be like a, a community call of sorts where we kind of like everybody, you know, talks it out. People can share like concerns, like issues with like how it would actually work. Um, but that's all taking place in their discord right now. So yeah, encourage anybody who wants to participate in that uh, to join and start chatting. Yeah. Uh, Joyce, what about, I know we briefly talked about it, but I'm just trying, and obviously we don't have all the answers and I'm all for it, you know, that like uh, I want us to do, but Arya mentioned like uh, another good point, which is like the acquisition part, which got me thinking about like uh, the management part. So like, uh, yeah, we briefly talked about you're buying a journal. It's kind of a company. People are going to be responsible for managing that journal. Um, and I guess we're figuring out how that's going to work and who's going to be responsible for that, right? Uh, I'm sure, I don't know if you have any like additional thing to add here other than we're figuring it out right now. So I think it's 75% we're figuring it out. And then 25%, kind of like Ari said, it's a lot easier to just buy one asset and display it in a museum than it is to buy a company and continue to run that company. Um, even DAO management is like as a field sort of evolving where some DAOs will like make every decision be a DAO vote, but other people think the best way to go about it is for a DAO to appoint a 
point person pretty much who has like executive control over like takes ownership over a certain project. Right. So one thing we could do is essentially like hire people via DAO votes to manage the operations of a journal once we acquire them. So like we could pay them a salary and basically have them be like the, you know, open access DAO representative who then manages the operations of this journal that we just acquired. So th this is why I'm actually really excited about it is we'll kind of be like blazing a trail of how DAOs can operate in a way that's more effective than just like crowd rule of every decision, which I'm not sure is going to be the best way to move forward. And we also, you know, are very lucky in that we have super talented operators as within Research Hub's network that we'll be able to leverage in order to like help make some of these bigger strategic decisions. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, thanks for sharing that. I, I That approach makes sense. Uh, let's talk about the research coin real quick. What, like the research coin you mentioned that can be um, used like to start off as like a a decision making a, de a decision maker for like deciding what journal to go after like for example like uh people a whole research coin can say go after this journal um but with that being said how does that work with the fact that the team has a bunch of rsc compared to like the average user of research hub are we going to use the wrap approach where you can vote up to your wrap? Um, have you given it more thought or still, uh, you know, early stages? Yeah, definitely. Um, and some of these concerns have been brought up in their Discord as well. So we'll have to kind of come to an agreement with whatever makes the most sense. Um, one, one of the thought processes of our token distribution is um, some of the people who hold the most tokens are like, have the expertise to help guide these types of decisions. Um, so it depends, like they may actually be interested, um, for instance, in having Brian hold a lot of weight when it comes to like what journal gets acquired and who gets appointed to operate it, that kind of thing. Um, what I'm thinking now, my, my gut feeling, and it would depend on what everybody wanted to do, is that we could make certain tokens um, from Research Hub not voting. So like, for instance, the tokens that we're vesting as a team, like those could not be eligible for DAO decision-making. And we could essentially have like eligible tokens uh, for DAO decisions be allocated in a way that like allows for community governance and for everyone to feel like their opinions are respected and valued. It, we can get creative essentially, depending on what the larger community feels is like the best way to move forward. Got it. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, you mentioned that these discussions are happening on their Discord. Is this in like a like a private channel for like admins or something, or is it in the public? Because I can't mm -hmm. seem to find. There's like a a, a launching team channel. And Thomas or anybody here, if you guys want to join it, I'll uh, invite you to it. So yeah, some some of it may unfortunately be private at the moment, but let me know if you want to join, and I can invite you to it. Yeah, please. That would be helpful. Cool. I think one yeah, of the I, oh, I was just gonna say, like, I think it'd be exciting just to think about what value um open access DAO, like what 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 assets or what ideas they have that would be really valuable to research hub and vice versa. And like how do you kind of get the best of both worlds by combining forces um, and just kind of parse that out a bit more. Because um, I think there's probably, yeah, there's probably some synergy. I mean, I'm just looking at the Discord. There's obviously a lot of interest and a lot of excitement here. Um, uh, so yeah, it, again, yeah, just interesting, be interesting to parse that out. It's, uh, it, it's like just following the Discord has been like a hurricane for the past couple of days because people have shared papers on like how like uh, open peer review could operate, right? And like, I've read a couple of them in the past, but there's a bunch of information which I totally wasn't aware of where this group is crowdsourcing it at a speed that, you know, it's impossible for any individual to actually comprehend it. And so like outside of even 
like the the DAO governance of acquiring journals, what I think is probably the most exciting part from my perspective is as we continue to build out features, we'll have like a, a lot of people who have thought about these features more than anyone on our team. Had. So for instance, like um, we had a team meeting earlier today talking about the hypothesis feature and how to like make it better. And like, there was like, you know, I've never written a meta-analysis before that's been published, but there are people in this open access DAO who have, who would probably have better insight into how to build a hypothesis feature than anyone on our, our team has. So um, like the one portion that's really exciting is like the crowdsourced uh, acquisition of journals, but then even more so, it's a, a community of passionate people who have thought deeply on how to fund research, how to structure open peer review, how to create incentives that cause good behaviors within science. So I think it's a it's a great way to really cast a wide net and bring in a lot more feedback into how we're building out Research Hub. Yeah, with that being said, Joyce, does it make sense? So I think a lot is gonna happen in the next couple of weeks. Does it make sense? Like um, I, I've looked at like other like uh, DAOs and how they operate. A lot of them have very strategic meetings for like, um, you know, to talk about different things and they post them and there is like a schedule. And I'm thinking like we may want to do something like that. And obviously I don't really have a good recommendation of what this sort of meeting agenda thingies would look like, but it seems like uh, we want, so what we want is we want to actually leverage the expertise of the community, but we also want to have like a guided guided meetings where as opposed to like a lot of people get together in, for one meeting once a week, you know what I mean? So that's just a, a loose thought I had and something to think about. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be a lot of work when it comes to like uh, kind of organizing the energy into productive outputs. Um, so this is a topic that we were going to talk about before um, all of this open access DAO stuff happened. But uh, Anton has volunteered to essentially be the community manager of Research Hub. So yeah. I think we would rely on Anton to do some research into how to best manage DAOs and to help like corral and harness the energy that exists in order to get the most productive output. So essentially we'd have hopefully community members who dive deeply into like being able to help manage it in order to, I guess, you know, give us that expertise that we'll need. Awesome. Nice, Anton, you picked a great time to join. <laughs> Sorry, Anton. <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, that that's interesting. I mean, I my expertise in how DAOs are run is limited, but, you know, at least I would be the bridge between how, you know, the, the academic structures are run and then the DAOs are run. So hope to learn a lot in the nearest future. This is like a kind of funny anecdote. Um, back in 2017, 2016, when I first started working uh, on projects like this, um, there was a big industry of like uh, ICO advisors where it would just be like business consultants who would help you like structure your tokenomics and like do an ICO. And it was all scam because there's no such thing as an expert in something that's only existed for a year. So yeah. there are no DAO experts, right? Like it's anyone can become a DAO expert if you spend enough time like digging into communities, seeing how everything operates. Like there's there's no degree in DAO management, right? Like it's it's all individuals learning on the fly. So. Yeah, I think everybody's equally well positioned. It just takes, you know, time, effort. And I think one of the really cool things is this is a really good reason to have a DAO. Like there could be a lot of super awesome things that come out of this if we can do it properly. Yeah, and I'm really excited because this is the beginning of a community, right? And it's up to us to set the tone of how this community will behave, right? So how, well, what are the norms? What are the expectations kind of thing that we can make? better decisions than the currently you know, run journals did. Hopefully, if you have enough, uh, you know, sight into the future. Yeah, totally. They, they even have some people there um, who have helped to run journals. So there's just a, 
a vast amount of insight where if we're able to kind of shine a light on the people who have the most expertise on any topic, I think, you know, it's, we will make much better decisions than any like small team could on their own. Yeah, it will be a challenge. To, I mean, right now we have a very small group of people, right? And one of the reasons we're so small, it's because the timing doesn't work for many of the people from Europe, for example. So we will definitely have to be more inclusive in, you know, how we set time to meet for the community calls and stuff like that. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the community management thing is a, is definitely a big challenge and opportunity also. And, you know, we're going through it as well through our lab DAO process. And, you know, what you'll find, I think right now, one, one issue is that there's people who are members of like six or seven or eight different Discord channels that are affiliated with DAOs, which may or may, you know, may only exist in that form in a Discord channel. Um, but... In reality, I don't think people will be able to work on more than a couple, two or three at a time and actually be useful or helpful. And I think, I don't know, the reason why I have such a small crew here on Research Hub is because like, well, we're the ones who stuck around. I mean, you guys in particular, not really me, but like you guys are the ones that wanted to dedicate the time and really believed in this, even though maybe there's, you know, a hundred people in the Slack or whatever. Um, so I think you'll find the same thing. Like right now, this open access DAO has like 1500 people just ah, going crazy, so excited. But you know, what's going to happen when you have to figure out who's going to build shit and also what's going to happen when we inevitably enter another bear market, which will happen, you know, like, right. so you have to like build with all that in mind. <laughs> yeah, totally. And, and, and I guess like the long-term vision of DAOs, right, is where it could in theory be a profession. Like you can like you know hopefully earn a living from contributing to these kinds of things so like that might be like a few years off like a, a couple cycles away but i i think that would be the long-term vision where like, someone like anton you know who's been contributing like a lot um would be able to do it professionally earning tokens so i think there's a future and and you're right it probably won't happen this year or next year but it will kind of on the time scale of what we hope for research hub yeah, my expectation is that obviously not all the 15 or 1700 users that are currently in their discord are going to be active contributors on research hub or in some capacity but i think it's still you know worth it to try to extract people who would be willing to you know to convert to more research hub aligned mission i guess mm -hmm. totally agree yeah i'm trying to think about like um yeah, I'll be thinking about it a little more, but I do like the idea of getting a ton of people and maybe at the very least getting them to do something on Research Hub. Like Arya mentioned, like there is like a, a lot of them are probably just like lurking. I don't know, they want to learn, they want to do their own startup thingy, or like at least like, it seems like a great way to just learn. You can just join these meetings and great. But like I'm trying to think about like can we get them to to engage in dialogue on a research hub because that's kind of what we need maybe I don't know maybe it will happen probably happen organically right yeah totally I mean one one of the ways we can do it is they're having discussions right now in the Discord posting these papers about like hey here's how peer review could work like I think it's pretty easy to move those conversations to research hub and we have the infrastructure where it's not lost in a discord channel like it's it's there forever under the paper yeah we, we can we can create a hub for them right for like yes. research research governance hub or something like that totally yeah yeah maybe we should do that it's a good idea yeah i mean you guys have actually built something which is awesome you know and uh i think that really that really has value so i think yeah, I mean, Patrick, I'd encourage you to like talk to the executives or like the management some more and just talk to them about, hey, here's what we have. Figure out how we can kind of com combine forces in some way, um, leverage your community to enhance Research Hub or and vice versa. The, the reason why I, I'm most excited about it, too, is uh, like I had a conversation earlier today with uh, someone named, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but I think it's Guillaume. Um, he's a professor from Cornell um, in biophysics, and he was really excited, like a uh, crypto native, really excited about what we're doing with Research Hub. 
And he offered to basically chat with all his faculty friends at Cornell in order to encourage them to, to join up as well. And so um, multiplying that effort times, you know, the couple hundred scientists that are in this open access DAO, like that's the beginning of a network where you can really have organic growth, where people are telling their friends and bringing in colleagues and having that kind of like multiplier happen. And so to me, that's the really exciting part is that, you know, it's one thing to, to buy journals, like that's pretty cool, you know, in like a theoretical sense, but we'll actually have people who are sharing their papers and like available for commentary about them. So just the network effects, I think is a massive accelerator. And it's um, one of the things, our tokens going to be listed soon. And so these people are doing this not because of a token value. They're doing it because they want to see science be better. And if we can seed our community with people who want that and like supplement it with people interested in a token, that's the culture. Like if we get overrun by people who really just want to see research coins value go up right now, then that could be, I think, uh, potentially negative. But it, it wouldn't happen if we started with a base of 1,700 people who are there for the mission. 100%. I think it's very important. The, the academia is very reputation driven and very snowballing, right? So if people get the wrong impression that people are farming research coin just to, you know, get money, that, that's a very different picture from, you know, active users that are doing it just because they want to advance science. Yeah, totally. And, and just selfishly too, like um, it's given me a ton of energy, like seeing so many people who are so excited about it. It's like super inspiring. And like, I, I think that we can use that to compound those feelings in a lot of people in our community. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I think is worth chatting about while everybody's on the phone is um, if we do merge together, um, as I said, I think there's like 5% of our token supply that's dedicated to for the DAO to make like, I think we were thinking grants before, but that could easily be switched to acquiring journals. Um, do you all have any thoughts on like, maybe we create a portal for anyone who's signed up in the open access DAO Discord to be able to claim 50 research coin or something so that way they can use it in a snapshot DAO vote. In theory, we'd have to distribute tokens to their community in order to use them for voting. So we'd have to think about how we'd want to do that. I wonder if like we can get like them to sign up for Research Hub, you know? And then we could add something where like they enter a code. And if they do that, we know they're part of this community. Um, yeah, and then we give them research coin when they do that. I like that more than just, uh, hmm. Ah, we have to think about this a little bit, though, because people have to have an ETH address. Yeah, yeah. And... we might, we might want to like, think about how ways it could be abused or something, too. Right, right, right. I mean, the, the most sensible thing would be if, if uh, Open Access DAO already had formed a DAO and allocated tokens, just having some mechanism to transfer one into the other. Like if you have five Open Access DAO tokens, it equals five research coin or whatever it may be, but they definitely haven't done that yet. So <laughs> research is way, is way ahead. So I think that's, yeah, an interesting question. Like how do you structure a merger um, or, or a, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's a reasonable ask to say, hey, sign up, you know, we'll we'll seed your account with tokens. Um, and we can, people... sorry, go ahead. I was just thinking we could use like a Discord bot to collect people's ETH addresses, like people in the Discord now. We could take like, we could just be like, hey, we're gonna take a snapshot in time. Like people who join later, maybe they don't get as much or they don't get it to stop abuse, you know? Um, and then we can just get their ETH addresses and we can do something like, we don't have to get them to sign up, but I think it would be a nice thing to do, have them sign up on the site and then claim through the site. Um, and we can credit, we can figure out how to credit people like that, so. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. 
yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so think... Joyce, you just wanted to, to to give him coin tokens so for the purpose of uh, voting, or um, what was the incentive here exactly? Yeah, I think it's a DAO. So you need some kind of tokens in order to make DAO decisions. I also think it aligns incentives nicely. And um, like one of the cool things about Research Hub is like people can start to earn research coin, right? Like if they want to have more decisions in this acquisition process, like go and post some papers, make some comments, and like you'll earn more tokens and have more influence in how this DAO operates. So I think it makes sense. Like at the beginning, we did something where everybody earned like a hundred research coin when they signed up. I think we're we're further along, so it doesn't have to be that much. But yeah, having having some kind of like initial pot for this community that wants to make decisions, because in theory, like they're not going to sell them. You know, they want to use them for DAO governance, which is like the best use case possible. So yeah, Pat, I like that idea. I think I think. We can propose something like that. Yeah, I think they, they could definitely go for that. Okay, We've seen to see too if they sign up. Like if people just start commenting on random stuff, you know, and uploading papers and really building up. Like because two thousand people is a lot. You insert two thousand people into an ecosystem, like be interesting to see how it works. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. I think it's gonna be really exciting. Yeah, because like yesterday they did have a, a vote, but it was just like a Discord. They just use like Discord reactions. Was, yeah, <laughs> the most like crude way of voting. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is interesting. Have you, have you guys? I mean, Pat, you said that they can, um, you know, make more research coin, but can can they? Like outside of the power user program, what would be their actions to get more research coin? I wasn't thinking about the power user program. I was just thinking if they show up on the site, you know, right. they start to interact with everything that's happening. Because 2,000 people is a lot of people if you just inject, like, in a short period of time. So it would be interesting to see what they do is what I was saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, best case scenario is they will naturally just, you know, continue conversations and research. Of... Mm -hmm. How... How hard is it? Uh do you think to like do this sort of making some of the tokens votable like uh eligible for voting and some of them not eligible for voting like realistically how, how long would that take um it's actually not that easy because ours are erc20 so we can't tell them apart from each other yeah that's the only thing we can do is really like blacklist accounts mm -hmm. Another thing too is there can be a social solution, right? Like the people who own a lot of research coin are in this room, and so we can just, you know, say we're not going to vote with our tokens. Like there doesn't have to be a, a technical solution. It's true. Uh, you mentioned earlier the cap, reputation cap kept voting, right? But right now it, they're coupled, right? So reputation research coin can be you, know, you can boost your reputation with research coin. We could do a mechanism for now, which is like, we can put a cap on the amount of voting power you have. So maybe that cap can grow ex like over time, as time goes on. We could say like, yeah, maybe like 100 voting power, 1000, whatever we want to cap it at, that's the max voting power you have, right? And then over time, we can define some mechanism either programmatically or just change the voting strategy um, and give like grow that over time as people get more research coin. So have you uh, at, like proposed this idea of like airdropping RSC as the governance token to them yet? I just uh, last night basically proposed the idea of merging. And so it's pretty much just been all this morning of people agreeing within their core team. And so I think there's a call later tonight to talk about some of like, like how we actually do that and then there'll be another call with like the wider community and i think basically there'll be a lot of concerns like this brought up and we can kind of collaborate on how to do that so right. i'll ping our early team channel but if uh um 
somebody from our team could join from a technical perspective. So that way we can say like, oh, we can do this. Oh, we can't do this. You know, I think that would be helpful as well. Yeah, I'd love to be part of that call as well. Cool. Yep. yep. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Does, does anybody have any other kind of overarching thoughts? I think this is probably, you know, quickly evolving. <laughs> so there will be many changes. And uh, again, like uh, uh, filling their Discord. So everybody should join and participate in the conversations that are happening there. The great thing about the Discord is that now we don't have to manage it. <laughs> they have people who can manage it. Yeah, it, so, awesome. it takes so much. Like you saw yesterday, people like it takes so much work to manage Discord. So much work, and, and yeah. they, they have like people from Constitution DAO who already had to deal with some of the issues when it comes to like what do you do when you fail at buying the Constitution and you have forty-seven million dollars sitting around? Like that's a yeah. complicated yeah. issue, yeah. right? Like yeah. you know, yeah. people who have lived through that. So I think. I think it's it's a super great scenario where we'll be able to lean on the expertise of people who have been thinking a lot about these like kinds of uh, decentralized organizations. Even if we don't manage to merge, I think like doing an airdrop to this community would be like a good uh, marketing like move for us. It's true. Yeah. I think merging, like at the core of it, is basically that they use research coin for their governance. And yeah, I think that would be ideal, but that there are like challenges with that because like with our team already I mean, having a bunch of stuff. Even yeah. using Research Hub as a platform to host the papers on, once like things are bought, yeah, like that's a good use case, interesting use case. Cool. Can you, uh, did you invite us to the to the launch channel or something? I, I will once I get off the, it's so hard for me to do something okay. once I gotta, I gotta like focus. Yeah, that's fine. All right, sounds good. Cool, yeah, well, thanks guys. I'll, I'll be pinging the channel and everything, so I'm sure things will evolve, but appreciate all the feedback and thoughts and everything. Yeah, keep us posted. Yeah. We'll do. Great, exciting, exciting stuff. Yeah. See you, everybody. See you, bro.